Welcome back. In this session, we're going to be learning how to set up our multi-surface operation. And again, multi-surface just indicates for us that this part has multiple uh, different kinds of surfaces. So your tool is going to come in uh, always moving throughout the entire part. And I will show you later on in simulation how much it moves. So your part is going to actually going to be uh, your fixture and your CNC machine will be moving quite a lot while machining this entire part. Remember, the tool will stay stationary just literally going up and down on the part while your part is going to be the one that's rotating and twisting at the same time and it's uh it would be twisting quite violently depending on the uh big uh, the amount of radius that you have on this part now of course this is just a, an example of a part that we want to do um so it's going to have a lot of movement during the simulation so let's go ahead and get this started by going over here under toolpath and multi-axis and click on ok so let's go ahead and select multi-surface, msurf is multi-surface, and go ahead and click on tool. For tool, now I've already selected a quarter inch ball end mill, that's what we want to select. So go ahead and select a quarter inch ball end mill, and go to holder. If you don't have this open, make sure you have an uh, open library, and it's going to be under your tools folder, CT40. So the CT40 holder will have all these options for a CT40 holder. For us, we're going to use a C4, C4, 0025 holder okay so uh, it's not here because I actually I already have this I already have it selected over here and this is it so after I have that selected come over here under cut pattern and cut in the pattern option just like we have done before in our previous uh, exercises and you need to select the surface that the pattern will be following so not the surface that you're machining but the surface that the, that the tool will be following that pattern so go ahead and click on the arrow and what this is, is that's the reason I have created this part with a uh, radius at the bottom. So I'm going to select both these surfaces underneath. Make sure they are a yellow when you select them. Now, if you don't want to do this, you are also welcome to uh, draw a, a solid uh, sheet of sheet that is that has a radius like this. Just so you can tell MasterCam that we want it to follow this geometry right here. Okay, or you can always draw a geometry that you want, uh, to, you know, to master camp to follow as well. So this is just going to be your cut pattern. So your cut pattern is going to follow this radius. So it's going to go back and forth, but it's not really following anything at the bottom. It just means it's following this shape radius. Okay, so click on end selection when you're done. And for the offset, if, if I zoom in, you can see that the machining is being done at this side uh, the, or the pattern is being created on this side. I actually want to create it on the other side. So make sure you click on the offset and you will see it offset to the other side. Now I might have selected a surface on accident. So what I'm going to do, because you can see there's a surface over here that is also selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this and go back over here and make sure I go and unselect all. There you go. There was a, there was a, a surface that was selected. And make sure I just select these two surfaces. I should only have two surfaces selected and then click on end selection. And then now uh, click on offset and there you go they only have one i'm going to click on wireframe so i can see my my uh pattern better and you can now see the pattern that is up on the other side of this part but now what i want to do is i actually want to change the cut direction to be that way now you can see the arrows are facing this way so that means it's going to be cutting back and forth this way and that's exactly what you want and then click on the ok button for the zigzag we can leave it at zigzag because it's going to go back and forth anyway but for the compensation, let the computer calculate the compensation. Stock to leave on drive surface. Let's go ahead and change this to 0 0.025. So we're using 25 thou that we're using, that we're leaving on the surface to be finished later. Remember, this is going to be your roughing operation. Now for the across step over, it is 100 thou. Let's go ahead and change this to 50 thou. 100 thou is a lot to leave. So I'm going to change this to 50 thou. And then after this, uh, you can leave the left uh, compensation direction. It doesn't really matter if you're going left side or the right side of the path. And tip compensation, leave it at tip because this is the ballpoint that you're machining with. So come over here under tool access control. For the tool access control, come over here and select chain. So this is where we select where how the tool is guided by. Okay, so we want our tool guided by a chain. And that's the chain I was telling you about earlier. So click on this arrow 
and then zoom out until you see this chain up top over here or then click on fit the screen so you can see it better so right click on chain manager and add chain once you do so come over here select this chain it's going this way and then click on ok so this this means it's going to be machining starting over here to the end of this part and then click on ok make sure you have entire chain per surface so you're you're using the entire chain uh, while machining uh, this entire surface because we made it uh, we made the chain just as long as the surface and then click on ok just as long as our part we can leave everything here the same we don't need to be changing anything and then come over here under collision control for collision control this is where you're going to be selecting under compensation surfaces this is where you're going to be selecting the surfaces that you're going to be machining to okay so click on this arrow and then click on i'm going to move this a little bit over here and then click on here this arrow right here and then make sure it's shaded so you can select the surfaces better i'm going to put this in isometric view so i can see it better and then go ahead and select all these surfaces that i'm selecting right now so those are going to be all your top surfaces right here so the compensation surfaces are the surfaces that you're machining uh the, that you're basically machining you're using those surfaces to be mach to machine all the way to the bottom of the surface okay so those are the surfaces that you're machining too after you have that done click on the end selection it should be seven surfaces and click on okay so now that you have that done we don't need to be checking any surfaces right now because we're literally machining all the way to the end of the part uh, this part is straight down so i know my tool will not hit it if it keeps going towards that direction uh, it's not gonna, nothing's going to happen so i don't need to be doing any checking of the surfaces like we've done in our previous exercise under linking let's go ahead and change the clearance to four retract the three and feed plane to two okay this will help us keep our tool clear of the area once going back and forth uh machining the part and then keep tool down within let's go ahead and click on percentage tool diameter for 300. okay let's go ahead and expand the link in and click on entry exit enable entry exit and entry curve and let's go ahead and change this to 100 percent of the tool length so basically your tool is passing is pa and the thickness is passing the part after uh, entry and exit by 100% of the tool so that makes sure that you're not leaving any material on the beginning of the part or end of the part that you're not machining. So also for the height, it's gonna be a quarter of an inch. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to the right side. It doesn't really matter for this because we're machining a top surface. And then click on copy. So this is gonna copy the entry and exit of the curve to be the same thing. And then let's go over here under roughing. So this is what we're doing. We're doing a roughing operation for this exercise, uh, for this session. And the next session, we're going to do a, a uh, finishing exercise, finishing uh, operation. So for the depth cut, let's use eight depth cuts. So this is going to go, it's going to machine eight different times, uh, the surface back and forth. And every time it's going to go down, let's go ahead and change this to half the diameter of the tool. So the diameter of the tool is going to be 0.25 roughing step this is going to be a 0.125 to machine the entire part okay you can leave this as zero because we're not doing any finishing operation in this uh, session do not click on keep tool down the only reason you would keep a tool down if you're machining something that is back and forth this way because you would start in the middle and you'll be machining back and forth back and forth the pocket and you until it's done and this way you don't need the tool to be retracted but when you're machining something that is this way when this like on a bump after every tube after every time it finishes an entire pass the tool if you if you keep the tools down it's going to go through the entire part going back to its normal point okay and i'll show you guys uh, how that looks like if you do a keep tool down but for this one i'm just going to click on by depth to cut to order click on apply and click on ok so this is going to create your part it's going to take a little bit to create your tool path There you go, it's creating a toolpath for you. It's gonna take a little bit of time. It's because it's a lot of machining going on over here. And once this is done, I wanna put this into a simulation mode or I can actually simulate it in the, in the back plot to see how it's gonna look like. Okay, so there you go, now it's done. What I'm gonna do is take this and back plot my selected operation 
and I can already see that there's a, an error uh, in this exercise, but I'm going to go ahead and click on play. And there you go. So if I put this into, now you can see your part is going is rotating back and forth as the tool path are taking place. There you go. So you can see there's one, two, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the left end of it. So there's there's actually yeah there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven. It passes that it goes down and the last one it does whatever is left. So if I actually zoom in, you might be able to see the last one, but usually it's so small that you're not able to see it very well. So there, because there, there's uh so there you go. The last one is probably very, very minimal that you're not able to see it. But there's eight steps down doing the roughing operations. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this into the verify and simulate the process to see how it's gonna look like. Okay, so master camera right now will set this up for me. I'm going to put this in a big box so you can able to see this a little bit better. Put this in fit the screen in isometric view. Okay, so there you go. So I'm going to click on my play button and you're going to see your first pass. Your machine is doing this right. You can see that the tool and the holder is being guided by this path that we've chosen. So now you know why we created this geometry line. And we've asked Mastercam to guide our tool the entire time to machine our part. Now this is going 0.125 depth at a time. Now this is a 10 hour operation and you can even make the surface uh, much better uh, than this. If you actually zoom in, the surface finish is not that great on the part. If I would have left this as 0.1 and I'll show you wh where we changed the 0.1 to 0.05, this would have been even much worse of a surface finish. Now I just did it this way so you can actually see much better how the surface will look like. So this will go down eight times through the entire process until it gets to the last end and it will leave 0 0.025 uh, material onto the part for our finishing operation. So you can see everything is going. I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you can see I can finish a little bit faster. And there you go. So this is your last operation and it just finished it for you. So there you go. This finish, it concludes uh, this session. You can see that it uh, this is the roughing operation. There's 0.25 left, so 0 0.025 left. So this will be done in our next session. Now, I'm not going to end this session quite yet. I'm going to exit this. I want to go back into parameters and I want to say keep tool down just to show you what would happen if you've done that. So click on verify operation and click on OK. So it's going to... Uh, verify this in my simulation mode again and then um, I'm going to show you what would happen if you kept the tool down. Now this would only work uh, if you do something that is the opposite of this geometry. So if the radius is actually this way instead of this way that it is over here then it would work just fine because your tool would start machining in the center and it would come out until it's done. So your tool going from the beginning of the path, the tool path, to the end of the tool path from the center, it's not going to hit anything because it already machined the part that it's moving back with. But because this is going back and forth, you're going to see what ha what would happen if the tool, if I, if I would have told it to keep the tool down. So I'm going to go back and forth. So this is my first operation, and there you go. You can see that my tool will jump from here to here, without going up first, without going to the to to, to, to retract first. Now we keep the tool down to save some time, but obviously in this operation. It's useless to keep the tool down because it's ruining our part. It's going right through our part where we want machined. So that's why you do not uh, keep the tool down. But like I said, if the geometry is, is the opposite of this, if it's a bowl shape, then you would definitely want to keep the tool down because there's nothing for it to sit. It's actually machining every time the exact area that, you're, uh, that, that the tool will be going back, that we'll be using to go back and forth on. So you can keep the tool down with that. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to change this to uh, keep the tool down off. And this concludes this session. In our next session, we're going to be doing the finishing operation.